Hey, what's going on guys? My name is CarQ and today's topic is going to be five tips to help you improve and climb the ranks in Overwatch that doesn't involve the big three, which is game sense, positioning, and mechanics, because I'll save those for another video. Now this video was sponsored by Blizzard Entertainment. We made it guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity to make this happen, so let's get started. The first tip is maximizing uptime. I've always felt that the easiest way to see immediate improvement as a player is to simply die less. Now it sounds very straightforward, but let me elaborate. When you die in Overwatch, you are completely out of the fight for 10 seconds or more due to the respawn timer, and it takes anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds, depending on the map, to get back within range of the objective to contribute to your team. And if my math is correct, that's at least 20 seconds or more of doing nothing for your team, adding zero value. If you put this into the context of a round, it's 4 minutes for the first objective on Assault, Escort, and Hybrid maps, right? And dying even 2 times is effectively taking you out of the game for almost a quarter of the push. So, as long as you're alive, you can provide value in your presence, damage or healing, and your utility. Starting from the top, simply existing provides presence because you're always a potential threat, you divert attention, and can cause psychological pressure for the enemy team. So take this example. If you're playing a flanking hero, such as Tracer, the enemy supports need to play in a safer position and are forced to dedicate more resources and attention to you. They know you're lurking around the shadows and they have to be cognizant of you, which can result in their own presence being diminished in the fight. This can also cause them to make mistakes and split their focus between healing their tanks and or dealing with you. Now staying alive naturally gives you more uptime to contribute more damage or healing to the team fight depending on your role. For example, I'd take a safer Zarya player on my team with 0% energy that stays alive for a full 30 seconds of a team fight over a 100% energy Zarya that goes for a risky play and dies 5 seconds in. For the sake of comparison, let's say the 0% energy Zarya is able to deal her 95 damage per second across 30 seconds. So theoretically, that's 2850 damage compared to the 100% energy Zarya. She can only output 850 damage within the 5 seconds she was alive. Now when you stretch that across for the same time frame of 30 seconds and you account for the death timer, the time it takes to walk back to the fight, look who's done more. Moving on, not dying allows you to have your abilities at your team's disposal. Dying not only loses the ability itself, but also the threat of the ability. For example, if you're a Sombra with an EMP ultimate ready, you carry the potential to disable all the abilities of the enemy team. This makes defensive ultimates such as Zenyatta's Transcendence or Lucio's Sound Barrier all the more crucial as they're forced to play around it, lowering their contribution to the team fight. However, if you as that Sombra die with your ultimate, that burden is immediately lifted off for those support players and they're able to transition from playing safe and passively to playing much more aggressively. Now this segues perfectly into tip number two, which is having an adaptive playstyle. Players often find themselves plateauing and stuck at a certain rank because they only have one playstyle. We all have that one tank who is always way too aggressive, charges into the back line as Ryan every fight, dying, and then says, Where's my follow-up guys? Or, Where are the heals? Or on the flip side, you might find yourself in a match where your entire team is so darn passive, just sitting at the choke waiting for someone else to make something happen. Locking yourself into one playstyle without adapting to the flow of the match will be detrimental to your ability to win games and climb. You guys know that famous quote by Einstein who is supposedly credited with saying something like, The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Yeah, that applies here. When you find yourself in situations where your playstyle is no longer working, you need to start thinking about why it isn't working. If you're an aggressive diva and you popped off the previous fight, was it because you were being pocketed by Ana? Was she enabling you? So what happens now when you try to play aggressive but you don't have any healers helping you? So start thinking about why you aren't getting pocketed anymore. Maybe the enemy team switched to a flank heavy composition and is now challenging your supports, thus preventing you from being healed. If you don't know how to dial back your aggression, understand the situation, and perhaps play passively and peel for your teammates now, you're going to be in for a bad time. Of course, there's always a fine line between aggression and feeding, but there's also a fine line between playing passive and doing the bare minimum. So all in all, I'd say there are technically two playstyles, aggressive, which is fast, and passive, which is slow, but I'm going to add a third one here and call it calculated, 
which is a balance between both, and this is what you should strive for. You should learn when to be aggressive and push in, like with a numbers advantage after getting a pick, or when to play passively, like when you're anticipating an enemy EMP or a grav combo. Knowing what is going on is the first step to figuring out when to play aggressively or passively, and that, my friends, is called being calculated. So how many of you guys tend to just shoot things in front of you and not pay attention to who you should be shooting? I would never, but if this sounds like you, then let me tell you a little something about target prioritization, our third tip. In short, target prioritization is knowing what to shoot and when to shoot it based on the context of the fight. Pop quiz. Say you're a Widowmaker and you see an enemy Rhine holding up a shield with a Zen behind him. Your team is yelling, Rhine, 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 focus the Rhine shield. What do you do? A. Focus the Rhine shield. Or B. Hold your crosshairs over the Zen. The correct answer is actually B. You want to wait for the Rhine to shield jump, fire strike, or for it to crack and be ready to headshot that Zen the moment it goes down. Charging shots against the shield may cause you to miss that opportunity. Another example of target prioritization is for instance if you're a support, knowing whether to heal or deal damage. Now before the army of Genji mains blow up the comments, I'm not endorsing DPS Moras or Battle Mercies. Your main job as a healer is to, well, heal, but it's also equally important to target enemies and capitalize on opportunities to either pressure them or secure the kill. This is what I call effective healing, aka healing by DPSing. Let's say there's an uncontested Fara shooting my team, and I see her in the distance. My job as an Ana is to heal my team, obviously, but if they're relatively healthy, I'll take a moment to put a shot or two on her before going back to healing. Even if she's being pocketed, now she has to think about the angle she's taking. She's no longer shooting for free because I decided to prioritize her momentarily, thus pressuring her. Even if I don't get the kill, I'm forcing her to adjust her playstyle. So I'm effectively healing my team by making sure less damage is coming in, making my job easier. This is also why Hanzo is a healer, because you kill your enemies before they deal damage to you. Tip number four is focus on yourself. You know, every single game is going to be different. You can't win them all and you can't micromanage your teammates. The best thing you can do is figure out how to play your best and how to learn from your mistakes for future games. The Overwatch team has created some useful tools to help you improve. You have the replay system at your disposal to watch, review, and analyze your gameplay from multiple perspectives to assess how teamfights played out. You also have the Workshop, which is a community-driven space that allows players to develop various fun and practice scenarios to hone their skills. Here are a few of my favorite Workshop codes that you can try. And finally, the last tip is communication. First things first, check if you have an open mic and bind a toggle mute button or switch to push to talk because you don't want to clog the comms. Oh, no, he's oh. <laughs> At the end of the day, Overwatch is a team game and communication plays an integral part in helping you win. When making callouts, avoid the common, Genji on me, they're diving me, heal me. Try to use your hero name because no one knows who me is. For example, say something like, Genji on your Ana, or your Ana needs help. There's also the classic over there call. I slept there Genji guys, over there. Where? Over there. Instead, try to use absolute locations like Genji sleeping in hotel, instead of relative ones like Genji sleeping to your left. And finally, I know not everyone is comfortable using voice chat, so if not, make use of the communication wheel. The I need healing function is actually a really good tool because you get a UI indicator on the screen. Just don't abuse it. I'm looking at you, Genji mains. Yeah. And that's it for this video. Make sure to follow my stream at twitch.tv slash I stream Monday to Friday and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.